Good morning to you lovely 932 subscribers, hope you're all well. Um, sorry I've not checked in for quite some time, uh, it's probably been the best part of nearly three weeks now I would have thought. Um, like I said to you in the last videos, just doing general maintenance now, so there's no point boring you guys to death, but I will give you a quick overview on what we've done in the last three weeks. Um, build is finished, apart from the landscaping we're pretty much done, but there's a few little teething things we're still improving or completing. Um, sand around the house, at least. Um, before I start, I um, hope Catherine you're well. Um, Catherine's one of the subscribers that I've um, been communicating with on the channel since day one. Um, she's got a house on the island and is trying to rope me into getting it redone for her. Um, obviously I have a lot of skill, a lot of material, a lot of connections, some staff, so it does make sense to try and help if I can, but obviously as you've seen my pain on this job, I don't really like the, uh, the thought of getting stuck in, into another build, that's for sure. And I've turned down quite a few, 10, 10 builds on this channel. People like Michelle in Canada, etc., that, that have gone through trying to go through what I'm going through, which is trying to source somebody they can trust in their absence to build. Um, it's a very hard thing to do. As I'm talking to you, the moon is still up in the uh, sky. What's the time now? Quarter past seven. Been on the beach for an hour. Um, the sun is absolutely stunning today. Um, too hot to sit in, in all fairness, which is a shame. So, half past six in the morning normally, it's absolutely lovely till about seven, then it gets. Um, scalding hot and wants to get rid of you. For those of you who don't know, um, Barbados, as you can appreciate, is hot all the time, but we talk about winter and summer. We're going into what they class as summer now. So when you come out of April, the temperatures start rising all the way until around about September, and then October time, they start coming back down again. When I say up and down, they are always 28 to 32 all the time. But in the evenings, September to about March, April, uh, the evenings get cooler so you're talking 20 to, 22 to 26 in the evenings rather than 28 to 30 all the time um, so in the evenings you have the doors open the air condition is not really needed it's absolutely beautiful which is why well, i think the reason why december january uh, um, up to march is probably the busiest period that barbados has mainly because of the heat um, but obviously um, great time to come from now anytime uh, that now's class as rainy season I woke up this morning, there's puddling all over the patio, so it rained again last night, so the plants are getting some needed water. Um, and sometimes during the day it rains, but as you know in Barbados, it rains and it stops. It doesn't really last too long. Um, so anyway, we're entering that hot period. So we're in a situation where we're having to put the air condition on quite often. Um, so let me quickly show you uh, the, the front part here that we did. So here we just literally took the sand back in front of the house and put a weed sheet down. Not that the weed sheet seems to be working very well. As you can see, these weeds are starting to come through already. This has been about three weeks. So we're starting to get some coming through. Uh, this weed grass is bloody awful because even with weed treatment, uh, weed, weed chemicals, it doesn't stop them coming through. But obviously it's, it's preventing a lot of it, which is what we're trying to achieve. Um, and we are going to try and get this um, de-weeded and uh, more sand put down. It's just so that we don't have to keep on doing so much on the front of the house. We've had some trees put in. I say trees plants um, we've got two very similar ones my wife did these when I was away so she's got this one here in and this one here in that are the same this one here was from Sandra um, and Stuart thank you very much that's now bedded there and we've got one of the mini palms that we've been growing in the house actually out here as well this one unfortunately didn't take but I think Sherwin buried it too deep in all fairness so um, we did have um, one of the palm trees from a coconut growing but unfortunately it's not survived but again I think it just because he went too deep the other two over here seem to have taken quite well. Um, so as you can see on the front, it's quite nice here. We have had a little bonfire here. We had a party a couple of weeks back. And we just dug a little hole and had some... Uh, kids had marshmallows and whatever else. But we might even do it like a little fire pit. I did talk to you guys a while ago about having some from a fire pit seating area around here. We may do that here. Not too sure yet. Uh, but as you can see, sun is low. But when I say low, getting higher. But very, very beautiful this morning. Um, we obviously took the mud all the way through here. And we had dust sheets put down that's now bedded in quite nicely um, we've had an issue with this machine that's um, unfortunately blown a fuse i think i said in my last video so we're not too sure what that is but i think the guys from um, any pumps are actually putting some form of warranty claim through at this as we speak um, so we'll find out what's going on with that um, what else what else what else um, the steps obviously we had those painted with the new stuff doesn't seem to be holding to the stain so we're gonna to have to look at that anywhere where water seems to pull seems to affect the material so up here perfect example we've had this put down on the outside of the pool and it is lasting 
It is more grippy when it's dry, but it is slippery when wet. It's like Bon Jovi, wasn't it? Um, and over here, as you can see, we've got a bit of caution tape because yesterday we saw that this is starting to puddle. So where it's puddling here, it's actually starting to bubble away. So we scraped it back, put some acid down, just to see whether we can get a roughness on here, which it does seem to be working. And then we'll put it back down again. So what you're really meant to do on any concrete surface is you're meant to rough it up. Then you're meant to put an acid on it to try and burn into the, into the pores, because it's porous. So you want to make some bubbles um, burn the, the top surface away and that gives it a nice gritty um, sort of surface for whatever product you put down to stick. You're then meant to put a construction primer down on that and then you're meant to put something down on top of that construction primer and we didn't do that on here or on here. So this is pretty much what you get by not doing a job properly. Anyway, not major, obviously we just need to um, we need to work on obviously what we're going to do here. We might be get away with just bodging this bit back up rather than taking it all back up again. We scraped it and that's as much as we could scrape off. So we should be able to paint over that, that'd be fine. But anything from here, when we do this part, if we do this part in the same material, it's very, very slippery. As you can see, we've got puddles this morning. It's very, very slippery. So um, we're definitely going to have to put some form of grinder on here. Um, I've gone down to... Um, Williams rental and they've got a machine there but bloody hell it's going to be like getting on something with bucking bronco um, it really is aggressive so I don't know I mean on top of that it will take so long to do here uh, but it's got to be done so we're going to have to we're going to have to scrape this somehow then we're going to have to do an acid wash on it and then we're going to have to obviously put some form of construction primer down um, and then the product we decide to go with if it's not this so anyway that's that's where we are with the patio area um, Sherwin's been downstairs tidying our basement because the basement is a little bit untidy. Um, and one thing I've been doing is meeting with solar panel people. Um, we're obviously trying to think about obviously the solar because now we've got the air conditioning in our electrics. Um, electric bills getting quite high. So the solar was always part of the plan anyway. Um, Republic Bank are doing 10 year loans on solar at 3.5% so that could work. Um, but solar here is not cheap. So I'm getting quotes as we speak um, and at the moment people are telling me I probably need about a 40 kilowatt system here. So 40 kilowatts is coming in around about 90 to 100,000 without batteries and maybe more than that. So depending on who you go to. So as you can appreciate, you've got the Williams of the world on the island that do solar and they're bloody expensive. Then you've got some smaller one man band guys that are doing it, doing it themselves. So you need someone that can provide. And you also need someone that can install and you need someone obviously that's not going to go bankrupt within 10 minutes so anyway um i'm in the midst of doing that as we speak but we've had a look at the roof we could should you about should be able to get 40 kilowatts of panels up there and then we'll look at putting the batteries downstairs and i'll probably do a separate video on the um on the solar just to try and help people out um, and understand who's on the island and uh, the costs and the setups and um, what you should consider I i'm personally looking to have an off-grid system which means that i've got batteries um, and the sun charges those batteries during the day and then once the batteries are fully charged that should be the usage you need for at least 24 hours it then goes to the grid and you get paid so they actually give you 35 cents a kilowatt so uh, but obviously the first thing you need to do is generate your own like the water supply the solar water once your solar water is full you don't need any more hot water after that so technically whatever your usage is throughout the evening from about four o'clock through to six the following morning you need batteries that charge that provide you for that energy and then anything after that go straight to the grid and you get paid 35p now a lot of people go straight to the grid full stop um, with all of their energy and then so what happens is you sell it at 35 cents and then you have to buy the units back at 75 cents so i'd rather have a unit that gives me free electricity free electricity and then bolt onto that unit later on to try and get paid so that the loan that you have to borrow in order to get the equipment purchased lands up being covered by the energy you're selling that's what i'm going to look to do um okay we're at the back garden as well and as you can see there's a couple of sporadic plants so let me spin you around and show you that i didn't pick these my wife did so i'm not too sure how they're going to grow and what they're going to do but we have a pink one this one's shed its leaves i can't remember what color that was it looks like that's pink as well and that looks like it's pink as well that looks like it's pink as well and they've shed as well and then we've also got two palms in here i might get that one moved it's too close to that entrance um, but obviously we had a drain here but i definitely think it should be here so i'm going to get that one moved today sherman doesn't like me because every time he does something i always move it um, but yeah so yeah i think they'll grow and what i need guys anybody on the channel you must know people on the island that provide grass 
give me some connections. I need to go and buy some grass. I'm literally going to buy the turf myself. So yeah, sorry, that was incoming call. Um, so um, yeah, from my point of view, um, the grass itself, we seem to be struggling to find a supplier on the island that can give. Um, but then again, saying that I haven't been stalking anybody. So anybody knows anyone on the island that provides turf, let me know, because I want to try and reach out to them and just get it done myself. Um, rolling turf out is not going to be difficult. The only issue we do have at the moment is there is a hose pipe dam on the island. Um, and as much as we've got lots of irrigation water, I'd assume that we're going to need to have some form of hosing as well. So not the most ideal time to be laying new turf sheets, certainly at 12 to 14 grand, that's for sure. Um, and also anybody that knows anyone that can do this concrete path. I've had three people come out. They've all said they can do it. They've all given me a rough idea what the quote would be, but none of them come back with a quote. And as a result of that, none of them have been here to do the install. And I really wanted to get the path done first um, before we do the grass, because it will become the boundary of the grass. So the path itself has been, this is just to stop us walking on mud, as I've said in the past. So the path needs to be the same height as this step. So we'll probably have around about two inches of concrete through here with two foot lines to make them look like two foot slabs. And then obviously the boundary will be what the grass butts up against. So I need the path to go all the way around, as you can appreciate. And all the way down here. So this all needs to be taken out. So these have been put in to stop the mud coming over. So obviously whatever comes in here needs to be dead straight and it needs to be making sure that it holds the mud back and the grass back. So, um, and that obviously needs to go all the way around here. So it's about 90, about 90 foot in, uh, in total length by an average of about three and a half feet all the way around. That's about four foot something. This is about three foot something and so on. So if anybody knows anyone, let me know. I seem to be struggling. I've got recommended to one man that everyone knows and he said, no, I'm definitely busy, but I definitely will get it done for you. He's given me a price, but yeah, he's not come back to me. So it seems to be a common bit thread in the construction environment. So anyway, that's where we are so far. Um, I just wanted to do a quick update, really. Um, the, um, the cottage is pretty much done, as you know. So uh, we are considering renting that out whilst we're here. So yeah, so it'd be good to get some prices per day as to what that could go for. Start offering that out, start meeting some people. That'd be quite cool. Um, inside the house, oh, what else has happened inside the house? We're finishing off the electric room as we speak. So we remember we actually fitted out half we just finished off the plasterboard and getting that sanded and painted, which is quite a simple little job. Um, apart from that, we're pretty much done. There's nothing else to be done in the house. The house is the house, which is good. Um, we did have, like yesterday, when I went up a roof with this, one of the solar guys, I did look over at this roof and the gutter was blocked and that was full of water up there. So um, they put um, where the gutters are, certainly ones that are on the roof, they put these little stainless steel grates on top of it, which are great and they look good, obviously. But as soon as you start getting Casarina, um, sort of bits flying off or whatever else they block um, so it's a good job that I got up there and saw that because that was um, about an inch of water up there so we unblocked it and it all drained away which is which is good uh, I suppose the test it did did give us is that you know with water sitting up there it hasn't actually uh, had a leak which is good so apart from that uh, we are where we are the pool is working out really well by the way um, the guys turn up once every two weeks so we've got them coming out fortnightly. Um, they come out last week, they put two chlorine tablets in the front, even though it's a salt pool. They put two chlorine tablets in, which I assume from doing their little testing it needed. Uh, we have had to put um, like an algae um, stuff in there once a month because of the issue with the, um, uh, the, uh, the jets not being as powerful as you should be and the trough not flowing as it should do. Um, we're getting a lack of water turning over, which means we get a little bit of mold in the pool and we get a little bit of mold in the trough. So we're adding this little product to it, little tiny, about 100 mil of product into it once a month to keep that green away, um, which is a shame. We shouldn't have to do that. It should be flowing. The jets are meant to be pushing the water over the front and the, the front is actually meant to be level. So believe it or not. Um, and as a result of that, all the water goes off level, which means the whole trough gets moving around all the time. But as a result of that, this side here that is too high, water doesn't go off and as a result of that we get mold in one side of the trough not the other in fact let me show you we've had it cleaned recently so let's see how much it's actually started to mold within the last two to three weeks just through a lack of water movement coming through here because the tiles are too high and this being too high so as you can see the white on top that is obviously the salt and chlorine build up and it's mainly on this side because obviously the water goes over as you see we've had quite a bit of rain so this brown that you're seeing, that 
is the mole just starting to come back as you can see it here look all the way along here and then you've got like a greenness to the water down here so we need to get some more product in there and give that a scrape again today uh, but the pool in general doesn't seem to have anything around here so sometimes we get a bit of a green build up in the corners here and in these little um, corners around there so there's nothing in it at the moment which is awesome so yeah apart from that it's obviously um, this uh, rubber we put down seems to be holding up really well apart from obviously over here where the water is settling so on Monday what we are gonna have to do is jet wash all of this out because water settling in this corner and it is going a bit moldy so we need to jet wash this out get some silicon down either way of this track and then consider getting this redone here as well um, so that obviously the water is definitely going to settle here but if it does settle it doesn't disturb the rubber but it is concerning that water sitting on top of the rubber is actually making it bubble it shouldn't be bubbling that's for sure you can see it here look for instance so that's water getting underneath this bit you can see me understand it if it's getting underneath but why it's getting through a surface that has um, not got an underneath i don't know anyway apart from that any questions fire down below um sorry for not checking as often as i normally used to any questions you have put down below any likes and, and uh, shares would be greatly appreciated your subscriptions would be awesome I don't think we're ever going to break that thousand mark not now i've finished anyway uh, but over the next couple of months i am hoping to try and get some of the older videos redone um, so that we can actually um, re-optimize and try and uh, you know get some content you know for instance how to install a shower how to do this how to do that we covered everything on this job um, but it's a general video about a build whereas i think what i'm going to try and do is try and optimize the videos for installing windows installing bathrooms um, so then people can see how to do certain things so those videos will come back up again at some stage re-optimized in a different way apart from that i'll probably check up with you a bit later on today if there's anything that we do different um, but in the meantime connect down below give me some comments